Uh, we put a, a chip in your brain to control your mind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jump right in. <laughs> Step right up. Who wants one? No, so, for, so Neuralink, you'll be able to see Neuralink coming from a very long distance because any device that you implant in a human is you have to go through so many tests. Um, it, it moves very slowly. You just do a few people at a time and then you, you go to extreme lengths to prove safety. Um, you have to go through the FDA approvals. Like we're not trying to sidestep any you know, uh, regulatory approvals. We're um, doing everything you know, by the book. And the, the initial devices will really just be a pretty basic. Um, it'll be about restoring functionality to people who've lost their connection between their, their brain and their body. So you can imagine like if, say, Stephen Hawking could talk or communicate um, as fast as uh, somebody with a fully functioning body. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. So that's like the what we're trying to do. That, that's our first application is to restore functionality to quadriplegics, tetraplegics, and, and people who've just for whatever reason and, uh, no longer have a connection between or a, a, a limited connection between their, their 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 brain and their body. And then the second application would be restoration of eyesight. So if somebody's got, uh, gone completely blind, maybe even has lost the optic nerve, um, you can actually still. Uh, directly uh, simulate the neurons in the visual part of the, the cortex. Um, so you can give, give a direct vision to the brain. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, you could actually, depending upon what cameras you use, you could actually see in different wavelengths. Uh, so you can see like uh, ultraviolet, you know, infrared, and that kind of thing. So you could actually do that. You could say like, you could see in radar if you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the thing I wanted to emphasize is that it's not going to like, sort of pounce on us overnight mm -hmm. uh, it'll you'll, you'll see it coming it's going to be very slow in fact I, I really think that um, artificial general intelligence or digital super intelligence is likely to arrive before we have really advanced neural links at least that's where the trend is right now mm -hmm. but ultimately the idea would be to achieve a symbiosis between our biological mind and our kind of digital mind so we, we're already kind of a cyborg, uh, if you think of like your phone and your computers as an extension of yourself. Mm -hmm. In fact, like if you leave your phone behind, it's like you have missing limb syndrome. You're like, you know, <laughs> where did it go? You know. So the phone is a kind of an extension of ourselves, like computer is. Uh, the various applications that we use are already an extension of self. So we, we are already a cyborg. It's just that the interface is uh, with our eyes and our fingers. That interface, especially output, the rate at which we can type words into a phone or a computer, just it's very slow. Our input is much better because with, with the data rate from vision is many thousands of times, maybe a million times better than the rate at which we can output. So input is like maybe, I don't know, roughly a million times better than output. What a neural link device can do is improve that bandwidth, allow um, you to be sort of much more symbiotic with your the, the AI extension of yourself.